You see, I was in the Marine Corps, and it takes about three soldiers to make one Marine. Uh, no, uh, it's a long and interesting story, though. Uh, I'm 17 years old. It's uh, 1945. The war's still going on. People that you know are dying. I mean, so-and-so's big brother lives around the corner, was killed overseas. And, uh, and everybody was going to war. There was no thought of, uh, of going to Canada or in any way avoiding the draft. I mean, it just did not in those days. This was not Vietnam. So everybody was going to war. So I'm 17 years old, and my thought process says uh, I'm going to have to go to the war, and, and the way to survive is to be well-trained. And the best trained fighters are Marines. I said, God, this is what I'm thinking. And plus, I had a, a buddy of mine, Everett Mills, who, whose brother was a Marine. And he, boy, did he look good. What they call the bucket of blood in your, you know, in your formal uh, uh, uniform in blue pants with this red stripe down the side. You were impressed with the uniform. Oh, I mean, I, plus I figured I'm going to stay alive longer. So I wanted to join the Marine Corps. Well, I didn't want to go anywhere until I finished. I wanted to finish high school. So I finished high school in June. I turned 18 on, in July. So the object was to enlist before I turn 18, because once you're 18, you have to sign up for the draft. And once you sign for the draft, they draft you and they tell you where you want to go. Ultimately, when you go down to the, to the draft board and you're, you're, you envision a lot of people standing in line, as you step up to the table, they say, what do you want? You say, Army. Man, I say, Navy. Next, what do you want? Navy, Army. Whatever you want, they give you something else. So, man, I want the Marine Corps. So I tried to enlist. So in Trenton, New Jersey, they had no, no uh, recruiting officers for the Marine Corps. And um, so I went in succession to these places, to Newark, New Jersey, to Camden, New Jersey, to Philadelphia, to New York, to Jersey City. And in each place I was rejected, they, I was either told we have our quota of Negro Marines or I was told um, you have to go to the state of your residence as is the case when I went to Philadelphia or to New York. Keep in mind, there were no blacks in the Marine Corps prior to 1942. It was, in fact, an elite corps. And so when they started bringing blacks in, even then, it was segregated. And what year was this, Mayor? 1945, when, when I went in. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, uh, I kept trying. They, they finally, in Philadelphia, I was so persistent that they, uh, they let me fill out the papers. And I took the physical, and they said, you have high blood pressure. So naturally, I didn't believe it, because it had been so, such difficulty getting this far. So I knew they were just discriminating against me, because I'm black. And so they said, no, you have high blood pressure. So I stopped at an office, a doctor's office in Philadelphia. My blood pressure was normal. I went back to Trenton, went to a family doctor who had been a, an Army surgeon. Blood pressure, normal. So I go back down there. It took on the left arm, right arm, lying down, standing up, always high. And, but I was insistent that it was okay. So finally, because I was so persistent, they, they gave a, a letter to the draft board and gave me a copy. They said, if this, this man passes the physical, put him in the Marine Corps. And so on, on July 10th, I turned 18. I went down to the draft board and requested immediate induction. And on the 28th of July, I went in, and I like, so I'd take your toothbrush with you. You're not coming back. And I kept right on going. And um, uh, so now the black Marines recruits, they're going to Monster Point Camp, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. The white boys are going to Paris Island, South Carolina. But we left out of Jersey City. We're all together, a whole bunch of us. But there are only two blacks, another fellow and I. And since he was 19, they gave him my orders. And this cat missed the train in Washington. So he had my orders. Now I have no orders. But I know where to go because I'm writing so many postcards describing how proud I am to be a Marine. And, and first I go to this stop, then I go here. And, I, and I, so I memorize the itinerary. So on the trains, when the conductors would come by for tickets, I say, I'm with them. I had no damn tickets because this cat missed the train. So then there came a time when I had to get off the train and go by bus. So this was when I first had this experience of the black folks, you go around to the back to the little window. And I had never experienced that before. 
And uh, finally, I get to Jacksonville, North Carolina, and I get on this bus and I go into Camp Lejeune, Montford Point Camp, Camp Lejeune. And I, I step off the bus, and a sergeant says, What are you doing there, boy? And I say, Well, I'm uh, where you are. I have no idea. Bam! He hit me, and I bounced. That was my, in my uh, introduction to the Marine Corps. And uh, to tell you just a little bit more about the Marine Corps, the drill instructors, they were white and black. I happened to have a black one, and he was rough, all of them are rough, but he was fair. The uh, gunnery sergeants taught you how to use a bayonet and, and, and trained you on a rifle range. They, in my day, they were all white. And they used to say, all right, niggas, fall in. That, that was until we got ammunition. By God, they changed. That was the United States Marine Corps. Well, because of those racial experiences you had, during your military service. How do you feel about the military now and the country, this country after your stint? Well, um, I guess I'm as patriotic as the next person. Um, and uh, I, I recognize that the military has provided for, for many an education that they perhaps would not otherwise have gotten. Um, I, I, when I see young people today in ROTC, I, I invariably say to them, you know, you can be chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And now I say you can become Secretary of State, because that was the path that Colin Powell took. And uh, so I say that to them, and uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a way out. But, but see, today they are volunteers, and so there's a difference. In my day, the folks being drafted did not necessarily want to go. And because there was a segregation within the services, and, and we had to die just like the other folks. And, and I have heard stories of, of how Marines, who by and large were ammo companies, and, and, and when they hit the beach carrying these, these bullets, this ammunition, and the guys were pinned down, then they loved them. They loved them. They loved those black boys. Actually, in retrospect, you probably were fortunate that you went in in 1945. I was. The war ended yes. while I was in boot camp. Yes. The, the DI came in, the, the DI's were drill instructor. He came in, so I'd get down on your knees and thank God the war is over. And he said, I'd get up, nothing has changed, and nothing had changed. 